All righty. Look at me standing there like an idiot. There's a little bit of a delay. And my head's cut off. Let me fix that. Hopefully everybody can hear me and see me. Yep, I got audio. Nice. Cool. What's happening, everybody? Just trying to see if I can watch the stream. I know, I know. I should have figured this out beforehand. There we go. Now I can see the chat. Cool. I think we've got it all figured out. I learned some things on the last, the last time I tried to live stream welding. For those that haven't been here for that, that whole journey, um, I think I fried some equipment, but I learned some things about electricity. I learned that if you have your leads from your welder spaced apart, the space in between the two wires creates like an electromagnetic field that likes to mess with sensitive electronics, especially if you're doing high frequency start with an AC welder, like a, you know, TIG, aluminum welding. <clears throat> but in this case, I'm gonna be using my MIG and it's all DC and nothing is touching the table. So that's nice. <clears throat> I'm just getting some tools together here. It has been a wild Wednesday. <laughs> is today Wednesday? <laughs> I'm not sure. Oh gosh, but it feels nice to be back out in the shop and um, working on a little project. No matter how big or small, I am always excited to be out here. So um, today, as the title implies, I will be making this multi-piece rusty plant holder into one piece. Uh, this is a, belongs to a family friend of mine. Her and her, her son and I uh, went to, have been in school together since elementary school. And uh, they live local to here. My mom is actually helping them redecorate their house because that's what she does. She's an interior designer. And while she was over there, uh, she overheard them talking about this thing and was like, oh, I bet Tay could fix it. I bet Tay could reweld that thing. So that's what I'm going to attempt to do. And I'm fairly confident I will attempt and succeed because this is not rocket science. So the cool thing about this is that I feel like this sort of metal work, this sort of repair, would be in line with why most home gamers buy their first machine. Maybe not something this small, maybe you want to build something a little bit bigger. But once you take the plunge and you buy that first welder, wherever you get it from, you know, Northern Tool, Harbor Freight, Amazon, eBay, your uncle, your cousin. Any welder can be, there's an asterisk there, can be a decent welder. Uh, if you know how to set it up right and you know what you're doing. There are some cheap welders out there that are just garbage, so take that with a grain of salt. But what this is, is a three level uh, plant holder. There's this big one down low. And then there's this next tier, and then this tier, something like that. And so it's been sitting outside for, good Lord, who knows how long, 6, 10, 15, 47 years. Um, and there's dirt in pl places that there shouldn't be dirt, which is what I'm going to do first, is dig, dig the dirt out of here, make a little noise. Try to get all that out. And then there's these like set screws that are rusted shut. But I think I'll be able to get those out. Some good old vice grips. But how's everybody doing today? I'm trying to keep an eye on chat. Mike Curtis, what's up, man? It's going well, hope you're doing okay. Hope everybody got through Thanksgiving all right with their family. I know for some it can be trying and exhausting to get all your family members in one spot. Uh, this year it was just, just my dad and I, uh, and mom, mom and dad and I, uh, around a fire. 
we had a, had a fire, we cooked the turkey outside and then ate it and it was fantastic. Instead of messing with that, I'm gonna try to put this together, figure out how it was supposed to work in the beginning, which will probably be useful information. So that seems to go on there. And I would imagine this, oh, this is packed full of dirt too. Yeah, that's, that's not helpful. So this is classic, one of those things that I'm sure was bought online and it's in multiple pieces because they have to ship it. It's the Ikea problem. It's the, I've, some engineer designed something or artist drew something that looked great and it was one piece. And then there's probably a whole other team of engineers responsible for taking a design and going, how, how do we break this into pieces so that we can flat pack it and put it in a box? And that, my friends, is where good designs go to die, among other places. When you have to think about how to assemble or disassemble something in order for it to fit in a box, a flat rate box or something, it, it puts you in a box. <laughs> Engineering wise, you know, it, it limits uh, the design. It limits what you're able to do. It limits how strong it can be. Uh, and it also complicates things in the form of fasteners, screws and bolts and wing nuts and terribly designed Allen wrenches that come included or sometimes don't come included. Um, so you can assemble your newly purchased piece of yard art and impress your neighbors. So I think, I think I'm assembling this in the correct way. Hopefully you guys can see what's going on. <clears throat> and then of course this, I say of course as if I know how this is supposed to work. All these legs are basically 60 degrees apart from each other. Oh my, this is precarious. <laughs> Good Lord. I'm sure this made a lot more sense when it was new, but I gotta say now it's a little rough, but there it is. Yes, you can see the whole thing put together. I'm gonna step over here, make it more better. Yo, yo, what's up, Eric? How you doing, buddy? I'm trying to, I'm trying to see the chat on on my phone. Don't know why it's not working. Chat. There we go. I figured it out. Ha. I'm not as worried with my phone being on the table as uh, other things. Turn that live chat back on. There we go. So yeah, I believe this is how it's supposed to go. And of course the problem now is that everything's loose. All the fasteners are rusted together. And if you apply any weight, it twists and it spirals. And then all these nice sort of pyramidal triangular lines become like a helix. So what I'm gonna do is for starters, Everywhere that I imagine I'm going to put a weld, I'm going to grind all the paint off and clean it up a little bit. So I'm going to do that with a few different tools. I'm going to use a die grinder, which is uh, a pneumatic rotary tool with a sort of grinding cutting bit in there. That allows me to get into some small places. Um, and to get the overall crud off, I'll probably use a selection of wire brushes, wire wheels in this drill here <clears throat> and maybe a flap disc if I need to and a cutoff wheel. Hopefully I don't need a cutoff wheel. Actually, I might go ahead and cut these, uh, 
these pieces off. But yeah, let's now disassemble. We'll make that strong again. Take this off. Take this off. Let's start here. So we got wing nut situation. We'll try to clean that up. I'm going to put a different one in. Use, make some noise. Y'all let me know if this tool ends up being a little too loud. I imagine that's quite loud, but <laughs> hopefully you have some sort of limit set on your computer. Honestly, this is not going to be that fancy. I'm just going to weld, I'm going to leave the fastener in the center. Hopefully you can see these three pieces are sort of, they're all bolted in the center. So I do have an angle gauge here. And when you have three of something that go in a complete circle, the angle in between them is 60 degrees. Six times three is 18, 180 degrees gets you all the way no, sorry, that's, that's not right. 120 degrees. 360 is a complete circle, so divide that by three, you get 120 degrees. So the angle between all these pieces should be 120 degrees. 120 degrees. So I have this fancy little angle gauge, and this is, I'm sure, complete overkill. But if it's worth doing, it's worth overdoing, right? So I've locked that in. This is a digital angle gauge. And you set it to the angle and you lock it in. And now I can hold it, hold it on these pieces and make sure I got my 120. And then of course these need to be straightened out, but I might do that later. So let's start with that. Move this one over. It looks like, yes, we are there, 120 degrees. All right, let me fire up the welder. See if we can't put some tacks on this thing. So I've got my welder set pretty low today. Uh, this is, I've got it set basically for eighth inch steel. This is, you know, these bars are eighth inch, but these tubes are far less than eighth, an eighth of an inch. <clears throat> but if you're quick, you won't burn through them. It's only if you dwell, if you sp spend a lot of time making a long bead or a big tack on thinner metal that you have a risk of burning through. So if you turn the heat up, just weld faster. Do it quicker. Okay, so I'm gonna, there's my compressor. So I'm going to, throw a tack in the center here, now that I've got everything at 120 degrees, and that'll lock that geometry in place. And hopefully, when I weld, the stream doesn't shut down. <laughs> so here we go. Ah yes, bad ground. The, uh, the, the, Electricity needs to be able to get through the piece. So, there we go. I ground off the paint on the bottom of the feet so they're actually making contact with the table, which is what the ground clamp of my welder is clamped to, the table. And that makes things a lot easier because then you don't have to worry about clamping on directly every single time. As long as it's sitting on the table, it's making contact. So I'm gonna check my angles again. 120, my dog is going nuts. Sorry guys, hold on a second. Hold on. Oh. 
Sorry, okay, that was Steve. My buddy, I thought it was the EPS man, running back. Okay, so, sorry to leave you, I'm back. I know the sound came with me. Okay, so all of our angles check out. And we're gonna weld it. This metal is terrible. Terrible. I might turn the heat up, actually. Yeah, I'm kind of, I'm kind of burning through the paint a little bit. But that's, sometimes that's what you got to do. And again, I'm trying to do this pretty quick. I don't want to spend a whole heck of a lot of time on this job, you know, because it's for a friend and every time you do a job for a friend, there's not a whole lot of money in it. And that's just how it goes. So I flipped it over. It's now tacked in place. So I'm gonna throw some tacks on the underside. Ah, now it's not making ground again. Of course, of course, of course. I gotta grind the paint off of here. And I probably should clean everything up before I weld, but I'm gonna clean as I go. So here we go. Getting everything tacked together. Hello. All right, there we go. So we're getting there. Getting everything tacked up together. I guess the hardware was aluminum because it melted. Well, there you go. That's okay. Now we got to good metal. So, we got this piece welded together. Next thing I'm gonna do is straighten these up. Uh, but I can bend this metal because it's pretty thin. So we'll get those nice and straight now. Use a square and just do that. It's hot. Okay, that's square. Bend this one back. Okay. 
check for square, a little bend. That's good. A little bend, a little more bend. There we go. Okay, so that part's done. my table. I'm actually going to put a little anti-spatter on my table. This keeps all the little well balls from sticking. Okay, now we've got a solid base to work with. It is exactly 120 degrees apart and it is square up and down. So I'm going to see if I can't, I wonder if that would fit. Oh, it almost fits. I'm going to see if I can't run a drill bit of sorts down in here to kind of clean those up a little bit. Let's see what I got. wonder what size this hole is. Almost. Bigger than a quarter. Five sixteenths. Yes, it's five sixteenths. So, I'm going to use a 5 16 drill bit, put it in a drill, and get down in these holes. Because the set screw is still poking in there a little bit. And this kind of gets rid of that. Because the way this worked before, is there is a set screw that once you push the first leg down into this bottom leg, you tighten the set screw and it pushes on it. So now we've done away with that system. All right, first level done. Now we're following the order of operations. This thing goes on here. And lucky for me, they have stuck to the 120 degree constant. Dean Davis. Hello, man, Dean. Oh, Dean, what's up, man? Sorry, I have to walk out of screen to check the chat. Um, good, to, good to hear from you, man. So the guy commenting there on the comments, Dean Davis, he's up in Pennsylvania. I believe his company is called the Standard Machine Company. And back when we first started renovating this building. On our YouTube channel, one of the first videos is called The Bullard, and it's a vertical boring mill, and it was a giant iron behemoth that was in the corner of the shop, and Dean's the guy that bought it and breathed it back to life. And I know he sent me some videos of it being restored, but he may have posted some on social media. Dean, why don't you chime in and let the people know where they can find pictures of that machine? Because it is gorgeous. Gorgeous, a true dinosaur. So what I'm going to do actually is cut, I'm going to I'm trying to convince him not to paint it because <laughs> it looks so cool. Okay.
getting these all cleaned up. Okay. We got those cleaned up. And now this is this. It's gonna get welded to the bottom. So actually, turn the welder off for a second. And I'm gonna use this die grinder to clean up where this bowl makes contact with the rest. up there. That's prepped. Now we'll prep this. Just gotta get in there and knock the paint off. So the weld will stick. Also, I'm super sorry if this is incredibly loud. I think I said that earlier, but. Let me know and I'll turn the mic down. Okay. All right, so this goes here like that. Oh, missed it. Like so. And now I gotta figure out how to fill that gap. I think I'm just gonna build my weld up and go for it. I'm sorry I'm not moving the camera around, by the way. Walker couldn't be here to help me film. I believe he's watching from home, maybe commenting on LiftArk's behalf, but that's okay. Oh, sorry, Dean. I, uh, you're right. <laughs> Brett's your dad. Uh, Dean's the baseball player. What's up, man? <clears throat> All right, so we're gonna put some tacks down here. It is entirely normal for these things to catch on fire. Okay, very normal. In fact, it's expected. These are the kinds of things, that was actually on fire. These are the kinds of things that most welders won't do or show you how to do uh, because they're not beautiful, they're not elegant, you're not stacking dimes, you're not making any weld calendar pinups. You're just fixing something. So that's all I'm doing. Hot, it is hot.
starting to feel very much like a backyard repair because that's pretty much what it is. Um, okay, so that is now one piece. Already feeling better. Much, much, much better. So, yeah, we can move on to the next piece. So I've already prepped these three sockets by grinding them a little bit and removing the set screws. So now I'm gonna take this piece and do what I did before by tightening up this, setting them all at 120 degrees, straightening them. Turn that welder off, quits making noise. And then <clears throat> welding that back together too. The wing nuts that hold all this together are in fact aluminum. And I know that because they melted when I welded everything in the middle. So that's fun. 120, 120, looks good. I'm gonna clean this up with the die grinder. That's the compressor, just gotta deal with that. I am actually going to try to get some help from my little magnetic friends. So those should help me hold everything straight and square once I get my angle figured out. So that's 120, let's start over here. 120 degrees, if you're just joining me, I am welding an old, rusty, brittle plant holder back together for a family friend of mine. We've all got relatives, or maybe it's, maybe it's your yard, that you've got old tchotchkes, as my dad likes to say. But just, you know, things you see in Lowe's, plant holders, plant hangers, flower pots, terrible furniture, end tables, that it's all, let's face it, made in China probably, some offshore factory. And then they, they make it in multiple pieces so that it can be broken down, thrown into a box, and shipped to your front door. And then when you assemble it, you're like, yay, it looks great. And then probably a year goes by, uh, four seasons of weather and a little bit of mishandling and it is pretty much garbage or scrap metal if you're conscious. Um, so that's what we're avoiding today is things entering the waste stream or minimizing what enters the waste stream. Again, this is for a family friend. So this isn't really what I do here. This isn't how I pay my bills, but you know how it is with family and friends. Right, Steve? Every time. Every time. Ah, uh, yes, and it's not grounding to the table. Because, why class? Because I didn't grind off the paint. Happens every time.
On a side note, I got an email earlier saying that my new long sleeve t-shirts are done. Official Lift Dark merchandise. It'll be up on the website later. Excited about that. Steve, did you get your pre-order in for the holidays? <laughs> for a Lift Dark t-shirt? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, right. Just like everything else is sold out. I'm a big computer hardware nerd and it has been a bad holiday season to be into technology. Whether you're trying to get one of the next gen consoles or a new graphics card, I feel like scalpers and people Staying up till midnight to spam that order button. It's craziness. Craziness. All right, we're gonna weld this. I'm gonna take this aluminum wing nut off this time before it melts. All right, that's pretty good. So we'll clean that up. I think the worst repair job I've ever had to do so far since owning this shop was a pumpkin. Steve was here for the pumpkin. The pumpkin was terrible. It was about as thin as a playing card and it had a terrible wireframe structure that held it all together. And so I had to weld like eighth inch like round bar to aluminum foil basically. Uh, as you can imagine if you know anything about welding it did not go very well. <laughs> And I told him that when he gave it to me. I said, this is probably not gonna work. And he said, okay, that's fine, just try. I'm trying to make the wife happy, you know? I was like, all right, <laughs> we'll give it a shot. Uh, I wonder if you go to Singray and see the I probably could have. Steve's been working, I should pan the, the we'll take a break, <clears throat> pan this over here. Look at Steve's project. I don't know, yeah, the mic's on my chest, but anyway. I'll talk, you mouth your, move your mouth like this. <laughs> Hi, my name's Steve, and I built a table. <laughs> uh, this is, I'll just come over here in a sec. This is Steve's baby. He's been working on this for three weeks, four weeks? Four weeks now. About yeah, four weeks. It's supposed to be a four week project, but it's gonna you, be a five. You're, that's not it's bad. not bad. No, that's really not <laughs> bad. Uh, this is all metal, if that's not obvious. And he built a wireframe structure around a four inch, five inch square tube spine and then slip rolled all this uh, sheet metal to fit in between all these contours he made. Go follow Lift Arc Studios on Instagram. I did a full, before he covered this with metal, I did a full like photo spread. It looks, part of me wish he'd have left it there, like this, okay. the skeleton. But um, the client came in today and she, I heard her making all kinds of good noises. So very, yeah, that's. So they're awesome. So Steve welded these with silicon bronze uh, and the TIG. That's like old color too. Yeah, that's all this gold color here. Silicon bronze melts at a much lower temperature. So he was not at risk at all of burning through the, the steel plate. And uh, of course he had to show off a little bit in stack dimes because this isn't getting ground down. This is getting painted over. So the yeah. end result it's needed to be. Quite, it's not quite nuclear pipe. Yeah, right. <laughs> Steve was a, a welder in the Navy for what, a decade, pretty much? Uh, eight years. Eight years, yeah. yeah. So he had people breathing down his neck for a long time. So this is, you get a little bit to relax. It's freedom. Yeah, yeah. No inspector. That's right. Well, I'm gonna let him get back to it and I'm gonna get back to my super interesting project over here. I did, sorry. Yeah, you can let the compressor do what it does. 
So anyway, that was Steve's project. Oh look, the, uh, the viewership went up as soon as I turned the camera to somewhere else. What are you guys trying to say? That this is boring? Huh? What, you want to see me build like spaceships and rockets? And I, d I would like to do that actually. <laughs> if you're hiring, NASA if you're hiring. As I beat my table with channel locks. <laughs> I want to work for NASA. <laughs> Oh no. Okay, slow but sure process. Progress. Um, my, I mean, I'm grinding too, so that's all right. I don't think it'll be too bad. They'll let me know. If you're watching and Steve's grinding is impairing your ability to hear me, just let me know. Okay, now we can put this in here and hope that it all lines up. Yay. Kind of, kind of yay. There's still crap down in there. Crap, that's a scientific term. Did you make one? <laughs> Steve's been trying for about three months to make, make a shot in the trash can and off camera he finally made it. Everybody, I can just hear it. Everyone in the chat is incredibly excited for you. Why is this not fitting in here? Garbage. Hammer fixes everything. Okay, now we're talking. Everything is starting to make sense, kind of. The tough man, you gotta, there's an acceptable allowance of quality <laughs> or something like this. What I'm saying is you gotta be comfortable saying that's good enough. And I know some people that are not comfortable saying that. And good for them. <laughs> no, it's an important quality to have everyone who proclaims to be an artist or a craftsman should have a baseline level of acceptable quality. This, as you know, and I've already said, is a unique project. This is gonna go in the garden and it's gonna hold plants. You're not looking at this, you're looking at the plants, okay?
weld, weld, weld. Weld, weld, weld. Go get somewhere. All right, those are welded back together. We are halfway there. Wow, that already feels so much. <laughs> hey, you made a ladder. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's so much better. Okay, so now we're gonna repeat that same process up here. And we're gonna drill out these set screws and all the dirt. Oh yeah. Drill bits go through dirt quite nicely. Nice. Okay, now same thing, I'm going to grind up, clean up these pieces and then clean up in here. Anybody would ever listen to a radio station where all they heard was like the sounds of tools? Because <laughs> that, could, cause there's probably someone that has this on in the background right now because they're still at work and all they're listening to is the sound of tools. <clears throat> Should make an album, a, Chris, a Christmas album. <laughs> the sound of tools. The shop is alive with the sound of. Die grinders. For those just now tuning in, you might be a bit confused. And that's okay, I don't blame you. I am fixing a three tiered plant holder for a family friend. Family that I grew up with. The husband of this woman was my rec basketball coach in elementary school. So I like them and I'm happy to help. And what this is, is, uh, well, it's art, frankly. It's unmistakable example of fine art. <clears throat> Whoa, this, I'm not being sarcastic. <laughs> It's very lovely, okay? But it was built to a cost and it was made in pieces so that it could be drop shipped. And because of that, after it gets mishandled and rained on and snowed on and knocked over by dogs and whatnot, they start to fall apart. And then most of the time, they go straight to the scrapyard. Not in this shop, no sir. No sir, not here.
right now, this piece, this top bowl and the three legs are actually all attached, which I have yet to discover is an advantage or not. I think, yeah, it's not that bad actually. That might be kind of helpful. I'm not gonna lie, if there's one thing Black Dog trained me for, it's how to work with rusty metal. So, let's see. Let's see if we can put, oh, I forgot the bowl. Forgot the bowl. Can't forget the bowl. There we go. So we'll weld this on. Hey Walker. Just checking level for fun. Need a longer level. Where's my longer level? The bubbles came apart. There we go. Yeah, so that's gonna have to go up a little bit. I don't even know if they used, there was probably not a level in the entire factory when they made this thing. This thing's never seen a level. Not bad. Not perfect, but not bad. How's everybody doing out there? Happy Wednesday, I think. Is it Wednesday? I didn't check before I started this. It could be Thursday, to be honest. I have no idea. I will.
will say this, I'm starting to warm up, so that's good. Amazing what work can do. This is just awful. For anybody out there watching that knows what a welder is supposed to sound like, it's not that. That is exceptionally loud. <laughs> I should be done soon. I know they work. They work well. Making progress. All right, there we go, that part's done. And so now all we gotta do is weld. All you gotta do weld this piece on there. I need something to stand on, I think. Steve and I used to work with somebody whose favorite phrase was, all you gotta do. Right, Steve? All you gotta do. Which is the sound someone makes before they're about to overcomplicate something. That's what happens right before someone is about to overcomplicate something. All you gotta do. We're getting somewhere now. So we're looking for straight lines. I'm gonna make sure everything is fairly straight. I have to bend a few. For those wondering how I'm making grinding noises without grinding, that's my buddy Steve. He's working next to me, <laughs> making some actual money. <laughs> I 
That's all right. So here we are. We are tacked, locked and loaded. Everything looks pretty good. If you happen to just be joining, this thing used to be six pieces. It is now one piece, thanks to my Miller hot glue gun. My welder is stuck to my piece. All you gotta do. You know the key word in that phrase? You? You. Yeah. <laughs> That's the key word. Yeah. My dad used to use the word we, <laughs> uh, which is almost funnier because it's like, hey, we gotta move this thing over here. Can you do that? I'm like, well, where'd the we come? <laughs> Why was the we ever there? Here we go, ladies and gentlemen. We are making progress. This thing's almost done. For those of you that have stuck around for this whole thing, thank you for joining me. I'm almost done. This has been a rudimentary lesson on how to fix broken yard art by yours truly. I got a spark down my butt crack. I'm not even kidding. That has never happened to me in my life. Woo! Yeah, it's better than down the front. Oh yeah, better than the front for sure. How has that, how did that happen? That's happened to me. That's happened, I've gotten close sitting down and welding because your lap is like this now. The worst is when you're doing overhead welding. It's, it's awful. Mm-hmm. I've done that underneath some cars before. It's on fire. Man, this metal sucks. God, look at, look at the stream, all that stuff hitting the ground. Yeah, this, uh, this isn't great, but once you burn through the rust and the paint, you find good metal under there. That was a little trick we would use at Black Dog every now and again when we were doing repairs. It's not great, but it's quicker. All right, 
ladies and gents. I think that's got it. So proof, just like Dairy Queen, I'll turn it over to make sure it doesn't fall out. Yeah, yeah. Dude, they still do that. I'm like, man, that's the one thing about the training that's made it all the way to the millennials working at the Dairy Queen. Sometimes it catches me off guard because I rarely go there. I'm like, whoa, like I want to catch it. <laughs> they go like this. <clears throat> so there we go. Um, all I'm going to do now is go back over. She's going to paint it black again uh, herself. But what I'm going to do is go over everywhere I welded and just hit it with black now just to keep it from rusting in case she forgets to paint it or whatever or she just puts it right back outside because of course where the weld is there's new material there now so um, thank you guys for watching uh, we could extrapolate all the things I did wrong in a later episode but that's not the point of this the point is to show you that you can fix things instead of throwing them away and this is exhibit A so yeah good luck Happy fixing, happy making. Um, go ahead. Uh, there will be new long sleeve Heather Navy t-shirts available uh, probably by the end of the day on liftarkstudios.com. I partnered with an awesome company here in town, Press Press Merch to get some t-shirts made with my logo on it, the logo that my buddy Walker Hooper so talentedly designed, skillfully designed, and a uh, big fan of those shirts. If I had thought more about these, um, this stream, I would have thrown some up there. But in a few hours, or maybe at the end of the day, or maybe even tomorrow, check liftarkstudios.com and click on shop at the top, and uh, they should be there. So excited. Next live stream you see, I will hopefully be sporting one. Uh, and I will try to keep doing these at least once a week, uh, maybe once every two weeks, but they will be Wednesday at one unless something comes up. So someone asked me a while ago for the streaming schedule. So long that I have something interesting to film, uh, it'll be Wednesday at 1 p.m. and you'll hear about it the day before. So Steve needs to weld. I'm gonna go. Thanks for watching. Go ahead. <laughs>